Welcome to class 37 on topics in power electronics and distributed generation. In today's class, we will discuss a couple of example problems on power electronic uh, component selection analysis uh, of power electronic circuits. So, uh, we will first look at a problem of a three phase uh, three wire power converter and uh, it is operating as an active front end rectifier and it is connected to a, a low voltage AC grid uh, 400 volts with a filter inductive filter for in interconnection and the filter is uh, 0.1 per unit or 10 percent uh, inductance and the switching frequency of the power converter is uh, 5 kilohertz and the DC bus voltage has a nominal value of uh, 800 volts. So, uh, we are given the, the, the grid voltages uh, 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 v, uh, E, A, G, A, B and C. So, this corresponds to uh, the, the, the phase voltages of the grid and uh, it is balanced in this particular case. So, the first question is what is the duty cycle command? required by the legs of the inverter assuming that it is light load and you are using sine triangle modulation. So, at light loads the drop across this inductor would be small. So, the voltage at the grid would be close to the voltage at uh, the A, B and C points. So, we could use that to determine uh, what is the voltage uh, the duty cycle required for leg A, B and C and because this is sine triangle modulation. Uh, the fundamental voltage over here with respect to O would be similar to the fundamental voltage with respect to ground uh, assuming a small drop across the filter L. So, we have uh, we have VDC is 800 volts and EAG is uh, 326 cos 2 pi 50 t and E p g as a function of time is 326 cos 2 pi 50 t minus 2 pi by 3 and E c g And this corresponds to uh, V line to neutral RMS value of uh, 231 volts and V line to line RMS value of uh, 400 volts. So, if you look at your duty cycle d a of as a function of time is given by, uh, by 0.5 plus 326 by 800 uh, cos 2 pi 50 t. So, this is actually uh, uh, 0 0.4075. So, this is uh, because you have a uh, light load So, your d b of t is uh, phase shifted by 120 degrees and d c uh, phase shifted by further 120 degrees. So, in the next problem you are asked to find what is the value of this particular filter inductor. So, it is 10 percent. So, you can use that to calculate what the inductance is. So, uh, you have P base 
is 10 kVA. Two thirty one volts and I base is fourteen point five amps. Your Z base is V base by I base, so that is fifteen point nine ohms, and your L filter inductance is. 0.1 times 15.9 divided by 2 pi 50, which is a fundamental frequency. So, this corresponds to 5.1 uh, 5.1 milli, milli henries. So, in the next problem you are uh, you are asked to look at uh, what would be the actual voltage at the A, B and C terminals with respect to ground when the active front end rectifier is operating at 10 kilowatt uh, unity power factor drawing uh, by drawing a phasor diagram of this particular circuit. So, for UPF operation unity power factor operation at 10 kilowatts, you have your grid voltage E g phasor, then you have your filter inductance uh, with the current through the filter being I L and you have phase A voltage phase V A which you want to figure out. So, if we have the phase diagram would be your, your grid voltage and you have the converter operating at uh, unity power factor. So, I L is in phase with V A. So, your you know that this voltage is 231 volts and the filter inductor is uh, 10 percent. So, the voltage drop across the filter inductor is uh, 23 volts and your uh, so you could use that to calculate what your V A phasor is. So, your E g is 231 at angle 0 I L is 14.5 at angle 0 and your V A is E g minus J X L I L and this would be 232 at angle uh, minus 5.7 degrees. So, this corresponds to about uh, 0.1 radians. So, so this gives you the information of what the voltages at the terminals of the power converter should be. So, uh, you have this particular voltage at when you are operating at uh, 10 kVA, you can use that to find out what is the actual duty cycle that is commanded to the legs of the power converter. So, the next uh, question is to actually determine the duty cycle and uh, plot the switching functions for the first 200 microseconds. So, your duty, uh, duty cycle for uh, leg A is now given by 0 0.5 plus uh, 0 0.4095 cos 2 pi 50 t minus 0 0.1 and your d b is 
over this you can evaluate it at time t equal to 0 and you get uh, uh, at t equal to 0. So, this would correspond to uh, the value of duty cycle at time t equal to 0 and assuming that you have a digital controller this would be the value that is used by the controller to compute what uh, PWM commands to actually uh, provide to control the power converter. So, you would have uh, d a is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4095 cos 0 minus 0 0.1. So, this is 0 0.9075. Similarly, you can calculate d b to be 0 0.26 one zero and d c to be equal to. So, now you have the d a d b and d c for the first uh, uh, switching interval. So, the for the first 200 uh, microseconds you can then look at what is the switching function the corresponding switching function. and you can actually plot that you have uh, if you plot the carrier and the uh, the mod uh, modulating waveforms d a d b and d c you have d a is equal to and your switching period is 200 microseconds. So, if you look at the time in microseconds this is 200 and you could then look at your different points of time. So, your t uh, your d a intersection would correspond to your would correspond to Uh, 9.25 going on to 190 your 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 b duty uh, b switching signal would start from 73.9 up to 126.2 uh, and your uh, switching function for phase c would be between 66.8 to 133.2. So, you could actually find the instance depending on your duty cycle and your tri uh, triangular carrier. So, this would be 200 microseconds, this would be 100 microseconds and you could actually plot your switching functions uh, based on uh, your value of the duty cycle and the carrier. So, in the next problem you are asked to evaluate what would be your common mode AC side voltage and uh, the common mode AC side voltage is V A with respect to ground plus V B with respect to ground plus V C with respect to ground uh, divided by 3 at the inverter terminals and you can evaluate this. the AC side of the inverter is so we have uh, from the the converter circuit it is a three phase uh, uh, inverter. So, from the circuit of the power converter you have uh, the voltage at V is equal to the voltage uh, from the grid source plus L d i by d t the voltage drop across the inductor. So, you can use that to evaluate 
VAG So your common mode AC set voltage is so the first term would be uh, this term would would be 0 if you are considering a balanced uh, grid operation and the second term over here would be 0 if you are assuming uh, a couple of things. One is that the this is 3 phase 3 wire, so the sum of the currents should add to 0. Uh, the second thing that you are assuming is that there are no parasitic paths to ground, so your Ia plus Ib plus Ic is equal to 0. Uh, on the AC side. So, your common mode AC side voltage would be 0. The next you are asked to plot the common mode uh, uh, DC uh, side voltage and your common mode DC voltage is uh, Vp the positive bus with respect to ground plus negative bus with respect to ground by 2. So, you can use the definition of that to find the common mode DC voltage. And we know that V P with respect to ground can be written as V P with respect to your negative plus V N with respect to ground. And so, your common mode uh, D C is V P N by 2 plus V N G. So, if you take that as 1 and uh, you could then write your a B C voltages as V A G is the voltage at leg A with respect to ground is V P G into S A plus V N G 1 plus uh, S A 1 minus S A plus. So, because it is a complementary function. Uh, so, if you consider this as 2, so you could write this as V p with respect to n S a plus plus V n g, V p g into S a plus minus V n g into S a plus is V p n. Similarly, you can write V b with respect to ground is uh, and V c with respect to ground can be written as V p n into V c plus plus V n g. So, if you uh, sum 2, 3 and 4, you can get essentially uh, V a g plus V b g plus V c g which we know is 0 from the previous derivation from the common mode AC side voltage. So, we have 
you could make use of this expression and substitute that in the expression 1 for the common mode DC bus voltage to get uh, VDC common mode. So, you, it, you can express it in terms of your DC bus voltage and the switching functions of the individual legs. So, uh, so if you plot it, you will get uh, a function that looks uh, roughly such a, uh, like this. So, you have uh, VDC common mode is equal to VPN into 0.5 plus minus so if you plot that when all the switches uh, sa sb and sc are high then uh, you have 0.5 uh, minus uh, uh, minus 1 so that would correspond to the duration over here you will end up with minus 0.5 VDC when you have all the switches sitting at 0 which would correspond to say this particular duration these two durations you would have VPN is equal to 0.5. So, this would correspond to plus uh, VDC by 2 and then you have steps of uh, one third VDC uh, in depending on whether you have just one switch being high or two switch being high. So, you have uh, uh, 0.166 VDC or minus 0.166 VDC and the timing instance where these transitions occur. So, 0.5 VDC would correspond to 400 volts, uh, 0.166 VDC would correspond to 133 volts uh, for a 800 volts DC bus and these points of time are uh, the same uh, intersection points. If, if this is in microseconds, here you have 9.25 uh, 66.8, 73.9 and by symmetry it would continue on the other side. So, you could actually plot the common mode DC bus voltage which has a six step structure in every uh, PWM cycle and uh, uh, one could then look at the edges when these sharp transitions occur and depending on what is the parasitics with respect to ground at each of those points those parasitic capacitance can get charged or discharged causing ground currents in the overall system. So, uh, so the next question is to identify what are the parasitics to ground for uh, this active front end rectifier. You have parasitics to uh, ground, uh, you have device heat sink to ground capacitance. So, you have uh, the device heat sink to ground capacitance. So, you have capacitance uh, uh, between uh, your, your collector of your IGBT chips or the cathodes of your diode chips with respect to ground. So, for the top chip and for the bottom chip. Uh, so, for all the six devices you would have uh, capacitances, you could have capacitances of uh, the DC bus capacitor, the actual uh, capacity foils with respect to the frame uh, which connect to ground through parasitics. So, you would have parasitics of the DC bus capacitance to ground also the bus bars with respect to ground. Uh, another path could be uh, your inductors are wound, uh, uh, the windings are wound on a core and the core might be connected to the cabinet. So, you would have parasitic capacitances uh, going to ground from the inductors to through the parasitics to ground. You could have then uh, the converters sitting within a frame 
So, these ground currents would couple to the converter frame and the frame itself might be grounded and then there would be parasitic current paths going into the ground, ground point of the, of the source and then flowing back through the power lines. So, you, are, uh, you can have a variety of uh, parasitic paths. So, device to heat sink capacitance. the bus plate and capacitor package to frame capacitance. You have inductor winding to core. Capacitance. and you have your actual converter frame cabinet, your grounding wires, your earth uh, back through the power lines. So, this would form a loop through which uh, you could have common mode currents flowing which would uh, lead to uh, phenomena, uh, interference phenomena. The next question is to uh, look at uh, what is the DC bus current, uh, obtain an expression for the DC bus current in terms of the duty cycle of the signal. Uh, that can be used to obtain the average and RMS currents in the positive DC bus. So, if you consider your power converter as uh, the three phase power converter, you have the three legs so a quick schematic. So, this is I DC of your positive DC bus. So, you have switches S A plus, S B plus, S C plus and you have currents I A, I B and I C and what you would like to evaluate is what is the average uh, and RMS currents in the DC bus plate on a per cycle basis. So, uh, to evaluate this, in the duration uh, uh, 0 to 200 microseconds, we have you can look at your duty cycle signals d a, d b and d c. So, if you look at the duty cycle signals dA, dB and dC, so we had the values of dA, dB and dC uh, in a previous slide. Uh, dA is the maximum, so this is d your d max. The dB signal is the minimum d min and dC is the midpoint in the middle between uh, d a and d b uh, d b. So, we will call it d mid. So, if you look at the switching signals similarly you could corresponding to the, the phase which is at the maximum and the minimum you could call this as your s max and the one which is uh, having the narrowest pulse we could call it the s minimum and the pulse which is in between would be S mid. So, you could then identify what would be the, the currents that would flow through the DC bus uh, positive DC bus in uh, each of these durations. So, if you cor cor uh, look at the first duration over here uh, 
when all the switches are low, then uh, if all the switches are low, then uh, essentially your DC bus current would be 0. Similarly, when all the switches are high, all the some of the input currents would be 0. So, the currents over, current over here would add up uh, would add up to 0. So, you get 0 current in uh, uh, the duration corresponding to the first duration when all the switches are high uh, uh, are low and when all the switches are high you will have 0 current. If you look at the duration when uh, uh, b uh, corresponding to S max uh, between S max and S min then essentially you have one phase which is connected to the top and the other phase which is connected the other two phases which are connected to the bottom. So, if you consider the current in phase corresponding to D max to be I max then the current that would flow in this particular duration between uh, the point at which your S max rises and the point at which S, uh, S mid rises would correspond to the current in the phase which has D max. So, we will call that as that current as I max. If you, if you look at uh, the, the duration between uh, the midpoint and the uh, between the mid the, the switching of the mid uh, switching signal and the narrow switching signal, then you have two switches which are connected to the top and you have one switch which is connected to the bottom. So, if you have two switches which are connected to the top and one switch which is connected to the bottom, then the what that particular switch would connect the bottom DC bus which would circulate and come back to the positive DC bus with a negative sign. So, you would have uh, uh, this level corresponding to uh, minus I of the phase which corresponds to the minimum duty cycle. So, you have identified the durations of the duty cycles and you have identified the magnitudes you can use that to calculate your average and the RMS currents in one uh, PWM duration. So, this is this would correspond in our case to 200 uh, microseconds. So, an expression for so you in this particular case we had uh, d a to be the maximum and uh, d b was the minimum and d c was the, the middle value. So, if you look at uh, the expression for the d c bus current you have if s max is equal to S mid is equal to S min and all of them would be 0, then you have I D C P would be 0. Uh, if S max equal to 1 and S mid is equal to S min. equal to 0, then I D C P would correspond to I of the D which is at the maximum level. If S max is equal to S mid is equal to 1 and S min is equal to 0, then your I D C P would be minus of I D in the phase corresponding to the minimum duty cycle. And uh, if S max is equal to S mid is equal to S min is equal to 1, then D C P is 0. So, in, in our particular example if you evaluate the time instance your I of d max 
is I A which is 20.4 amps and I at uh, D min is your B phase current which is uh, minus 10.2 amps. So, you could use that to calculate the, the, the DC bus current uh, and as you are moving along the sinus sine wave the value of what phase would have the D max and D min and the D min D mid would actually uh, interchange as uh, you proceed with time. So, you could actually evaluate uh, your DC bus currents at each of the switching instance. So, you could write an expression for your, your, your average current So, IDCP average at the nth instant would be I of D max at the nth instant into D max at the nth switching cycle instant and D mid So, you could uh, write an expression for your average DC bus current and similarly you could write an expression because these are uh, square wave pulses you are ignoring the ripple in your phase currents and you are assuming the switching duration to be sufficiently long that your AC currents can be uh, assumed to be approximately flat. So, your I D C P R M S square at instant n is I d max square at n into So, once you have the average and uh, RMS uh, DC bus current in the bus plate, you could then calculate what is the high frequency RMS currents which would essentially flow into your DC bus capacitors. So, your I high frequency RMS is So, you subtract the squares of these and take the square root, you would get the high frequency RMS currents that uh, would essentially flow into your DC bus capacitor. And then you could actually, uh, so this, this calculation is on a per cycle basis. So, if you want to calculate over the entire fundamental cycle, uh, you have I cap high frequency RMS to be given by which is given by uh, your number of uh, switching instance on a switching cycle. So, this would be F naught divided by F S W uh, summation I is equal to 1 to n. So, we have considered this particular term to be equal to n of I high frequency RMS square at the instant i and taking the square root.
So, if you evaluate it for uh, the active rectifier at 10 kilowatt uh, 5 kilohertz switching frequency. So, you have 100 switching, uh, switching cycles per fundamental. So, you get a high frequency RMS current in a DC bus capacitor to be about uh, 8.8 amps. So, for the active front end rectifier operation, you have about 8.8 .8 amps flowing through the DC bus uh, as high frequency RMS currents. So, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, the frequency components of the currents that are flowing through the DC bus, uh, what we calculated over here uh, 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 was the RMS, high frequency RMS. So, if you look at it at different power levels, you can change uh, the different power levels would correspond to change in current levels on the AC side current you can evaluate that uh, these expressions, you will find that your uh, for operation of a three phase power converter, the average balanced operation the I average of n stays constant at uh, uh, for a power level of 10 kilowatts, it stays constant at 12.4 amps for all n at uh, 10 kilowatt. And, uh, if you look at the 5, 5 kilowatt power level, this would be 6.2 amps. So, essentially the average current uh, stays uh, flat as a function of time. There is no low frequency uh, riding on top of the average current. So, if you look at then the high frequency positive bus current, it is essentially a DC plus high frequency components. So, high frequency AC. So, if you if you look at uh, the current waveform you would find that uh, uh, the, the geometry of the waveforms if you do a time domain simulation would have repeat uh, the geometry would repeat every uh, 60 degrees. So, just looking at it you would think that there is a sixth harmonic, but under ideal switching conditions taking ideal switches there, there would be no low frequency component it would essentially be a DC plus high frequency component and uh, there are no harmonics of 50 hertz considering a ideal power converter. Of course, if you have non-ideality such as dead time, uh, on state drops etcetera, those could actually introduce harmonics in, in the system, but in an ideal case it would essentially be DC when you are having uh, uh, a balanced three phase operation. If you look at the period of uh, repetition, you would have essentially uh, 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 the you would have the switching switching period would be the period corresponding to when you have similar waveforms. They are not exactly similar because the duty cycles are changing over the sinusoid, but you could think about the high frequency component repeating at 5 kilohertz or TSW. And it would not exactly be FSW would have side bands because your duty cycle is varying uh, as the sine wave proceeds and your duty cycle levels are actually varying with time. So, if you look at your high frequency RMS currents, uh, 
it is 8.8 .8 amps at uh, 10 kilowatts and 4.4 .4 amps at 5 kilowatts. In the next problem you are uh, given details about the DC bus capacitor. So, we have in a problem uh, uh, two capacitors that are connected in series. So, you have two capacitors in series and, and their value is 1000 uh, uh, 100 microfarads at 450 volts and you are given lifetime parameters uh, 3000 hours at 85 degrees centigrade ampient uh, and 5 amps RMS current at, uh, at 100 hertz and the ESR at 100 hertz is uh, 110 milli ohms and you have current multipliers when the ambient is reduced. So, at 55 degrees C ambient you have a current multiplier of 2, at 45 you have current multiplier of 2.24 and you have also a ripple current multiplier. Uh, so, this uh, at uh, you can have 5 amps at 100 hertz, you can have only 0 0.82 times of that at 50 hertz, you can have 1.24 times of that at uh, 5 kilohertz and 1.27 at the higher frequencies. Uh, we are told that the ambient temperature for the active rectifier is 50 degrees. So, this is the temperature within the converter cabinet and uh, your actual uh, rating of the capacitor is 450 volts, your DC bus voltage is uh, 800 volts. So, your capacitor voltage is 400. So, you have uh, improvement in the lifetime factor by 1.2 because you are operating at a reduced voltage. So, you are asked to calculate the expected capacitor life, the power loss uh, in the capacitor bank and the ripple on the DC bus voltage. So, to do that uh, we will start with uh, looking at the thermal uh, properties of this particular capacitor bank. So, you have your you have your thermal resistance R T H from your core to ambient of the capacitor and we are told that at 85 degrees centigrade you have uh, this would be the temperature rise between the ambient and the core and you can pass 5 amps. So, the, your power loss is I square R, I square is 5 amps square times 110 milli ohms and you are told that uh, you can pass twice that current if your tempera ambient temperature is reduced to 55. So, T C minus 55 is uh, 10 square into 110 milli ohms. So, this is the I square R. So, you could then use this particular expression to calculate what the core temperature is and the thermal uh, resistance from core to ambient. So, your core temperature is 95 degrees centigrade and your RTH from core to ambient is 3.64 degrees centigrade per watt. Your current multiplier at 5 kilohertz is 1.24. So, you can use that to calculate your ESR at 5 kilohertz. So, you have uh, 1.24 into 5 square into ESR at 5 kilohertz is your I square into R, the power dissipation at 100 hertz. So, you could use that to calculate your ESR at 5 kilohertz. So, So, your uh, ESR at 5 kilohertz is 71.5 milli ohms 
and your power loss in your capacitor is I square r. We calculated the high frequency RMS currents to be 8.8 .8 amps and your r is 71.5. So, you have 5.6 watts power loss in each capacitor. So, you can calculate your core temperature is uh, 50 degrees centigrade which is the ambient plus your power dissipation which is 5.6 into your RTH which is 3.64. So, this is 70.3 degrees centigrade. Your also asked to calculate the power dissipation in your capacitor bank. So, there are two capacitors. So, you have your power dissipation in total is 11.2 watts. So, you know your core temperature which can be used to calculate your life. So, you have 3000 hours at the nominal core temperature and you have a factor of 1.2 because you are operating at reduced voltage provided from the data sheet and you have your nominal uh, temperature of the core is 95, your actual operating is 70.3 and considering the simple lifetime model of doubling in life for a 10 degree reduction in temperature, this would correspond to 19.9 into 10 to the power of 3 hours or uh, 2.3 uh, years. So, you have the power loss in the capacitor bank, your expected life. So, this is running at rated temperature 24 hours a day around the clock. So, the next thing you could calculate is the ripple voltage in the DC bus capacitor bank. So, one thing we we can we will do a, a some simplifying assumptions we will assume that your 8.8 .8 amps uh, 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 which is a high frequency RMS current at the switching frequency would have uh, underlying sinusoidal value uh, of 8.8 uh, .8, uh, amps into root 2 to be the, uh, the envelope of this high frequency RMS current. So, due to the capacitor capacitive effect your V high frequency ripple would be 8.8 .8 amps into root 2 divided by 2 pi into 5 kilohertz which is your switching frequency into into your value of your capacitance. So, you have about 0.361 volt as the capacitive voltage ripple. You could also calculate the voltage ripple because of a ESR. So, that would be high frequency due to the resistive ESR effect would be 8.8 .8 root 2 times the ESR at the high frequency which is 71.5 milli ohms. So, this is 0.632 volts per cap. So, if you look at the cap bank you have two capacitors in series. So, you have a total voltage drop of about 1.3 uh, volts. So, your VDC max is uh, is 800 plus 1.3 and VDC min is approximately 800 minus 1.3. So, it is you could uh, think of it as a noise which is uh, uh, around your nominal DC bus voltage uh, 
assuming that your controllers are working and ensuring that your DC bus is regulated to 800 volts. In the next problem, you are asked to uh, look at the case where you have an uh, unbalance. So, we are essentially repeating this problem for uh, this analysis when the grid has a 3 percent unbalance caused by a neg negative sequence in the grid voltage. So, uh, the first thing is to evaluate what this negative sequence voltage is and then uh, make use of that to find what your ABC voltages are and use that to evaluate your duty cycles. So, we have V A B C is and we have our V plus to be 326 volts. Uh, it is continuing to operate un under the nominal positive sequence voltage. Your Neg negative sequence voltage is 3 percent. So, that corresponds to 9.8 volts and your 0 sequence you are assuming that to be not present which is uh, 0 volts. So, you could actually now calculate what is your A, B and C voltage. We did that uh, previously for the balance condition. So, we could now add the unbalanced term which would correspond to the 9.8 volts, the ABC voltages can actually got be obtained through uh, 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 the, the phase to the sequence to phase transformation. You have V A of T to be 326 cos omega T at minus 0.1 plus 9.8 cos omega T. So, your negative sequence is rotating in the opposite direction compared to the, 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 the negative is with rotating in the opposite direction compared to the positive sequence. So, you have the signs up, uh, to be handled appropriately. So, you using this you could then calculate your duty cycles. Your duty cycle for example, for phase A, D A would be V A of T divided by V D C which is 800 volts plus 0.5 and you could then calculate your DB and DC. Uh, you know your IA and IB and IC will assume that the converter control uh, still provides provides balanced currents so by appropriate compensation it's ensuring balanced currents even when the grid voltage is unbalanced so you you, can, you know your ia ib and ic which is the same as what you had for the balanced condition so you could then calculate your i average of as a function of time would be your ia times da plus IB times DB 
plus I C times D C and you could evaluate that to be uh, it happens to be 12.5 plus 0 0.375 cos 2 pi 100 T at 10 kilowatt per hour. So, if you look at uh, the value of 12.5, this corresponds to uh, your, your 3 by 2 into 326 close to 327 times uh, 20.4 this is your 10 kilowatt the peak current corresponding to your 10 kilowatt power level so that would be your 12.5 so while working out this particular simplification you could actually see that this is indeed the case and your 3.75 would correspond to 3 by 2 into 9.8 which is your unbalanced voltage times uh, again 20.4. So, it is your interaction of your unbalanced voltage times your balanced uh, current which gives rise to your 100, 100 hertz ripple on your DC bus. Thank you.